Hey Wolfpack, and welcome back. Tonight's story is, my mother is a prison nurse, and I found this recording in a room by four professor. With that said, whether you're sitting around a campfire, on the night shift, or even laying in bed, let my voice soothe your nightmares. Just between you and me, I used to hate our prisoners. You might think it made my job as a guard harder, but it actually helped. First thing you gotta understand is that they are criminal trash. Bunch of robbers, killers, and drug dealers who must be kept in line. You ain't gonna get them to respect you with kind words and hugs. That said, I must give it to them. They are smart. Maybe smart ain't the right word. Because they are a bunch of stupid idiots. But they are undoubtedly resourceful. Those people can hide contraband in their cells like masters. Even if you search every corner and crevice, you're still gonna miss something. They can also figure out such elaborate escape plans, you'd be amazed. I can respect these skills. For most of the other guards, it's a pain in the ass. But I consider it a game. They try to hide something, or find a way out, I bust them, and then it's time for the best part of the job, punishing them. My favorite tool for this is the pepperball gun. The shot knocks those idiots back, and the gas that comes out of the bullet really screws them up. They trash around with teary eyes, even throw up sometimes. It's always fun to watch. At this point, you might be disagreeing thinking that I'm a monster or something. But let me ask you this, if a bunch of murderers and others were rioting like wild animals and trying to hurt you, wouldn't you protect yourself? Would you feel better for them after they tried to kill you? I might be enjoying my job more than the other guards, but there's nothing wrong with that. Unfortunately, the warden disagree. He was very smug with his fancy suit and gold watch. He wanted to fire me at first. The reason? Use of excessive force, abuse of power, and some other bullshit like that. But even he knew, I'm good at what I do, so I was given a choice. Start working at another prison, or be unemployed. Not much of a choice, was it? I wasn't surprised that the prison where I had to go was short on staff. Everybody from my line of work has heard of that godforsaken place. The whole facility is underground. High security, no visitors, and the best of all, it's supposed to be haunted or something. Nobody in the right mind wanted to work there. I never believed in ghosts and this kind of crap, but I still hated the idea. I wasn't afraid of getting spooked, but starting from scratch and winning the respect of everyone is a hell of a challenge, even in a regular prison. I was kind of hoping there was nothing to the rumors. But from the moment I got there, I knew something wasn't right. I gotta tell you, most prisons are really noisy. A lot of people create a lot of noise. It makes sense, I guess. But this place was quiet. The inmates were just sitting in their cells like sacks of potatoes. They did not talk to one another. Even at lunchtime, they just sat down and stuffed their faces without speaking and returned to their cells. It was the same with the guards. I tried to have a conversation with some of them, but you couldn't get more than a few words out of them. They were like robots. At least the job itself was a piece of cake. Almost too easy. Prisoners weren't harassing each other. They did not try to hide contraband in their cells or in their butts. And they followed my instructions without a single problem. Even out in the yard, where most fights happen, they just walked around quietly. Now, you might think that I was happy to have such an easy life there, but it kind of creeped me out a little. It's not normal for humans to behave this way, and there was no logical explanation for it. It felt like I was the only sane person in the building, and everyone else was full of sedatives. I tried to speak to the prison nurse, ask her what the hell was going on. Would you mind telling me what's wrong with everyone here? Do you put something in the food or what? I asked, after I requested a session with her. She answered in a very monotone voice. Our current population is 1,417 men, 
and all of them are perfectly healthy. Yeah, no shit, lady. Now, would you mind answering my question? She looked at me with her lifeless eyes and continued, The men come in here, search of change. We have to address their criminal thinking and lifestyle. Now, listen here. Do you put something in the food? A balanced diet includes food from five groups and fulfills all of the person's nutritional needs. I realized she won't tell me anything useful. Maybe the whole thing had nothing to do with the food. But I was sure as hell that I would never touch anything from the canteen. I tried asking the other guards about the strange behavior of their prisoners too. I only got vague answers about how everything is normal and tranquil. Now, I ain't easy to scare, but goddamn, that place gave me the creeps. I wanted to resign after my first week there, but my job has never been easier. No riots, no fights, no nothing. Just boring guard duty. So, I decided to put on my big boy pants and try to ignore all the unsettling crap. Easier said than done. Almost a month there, it felt like I was going crazy. I started hearing some strange shit all the time. Unintelligible sounds and odd noises coming from somewhere. I tried to find the source, but the volume of these noises didn't change. No matter where I went inside the prison. Never too loud, but always there. Of course, the other guards couldn't hear it. They just said the same thing with that empty look on their faces. This place is quiet and all prisons should be. What idiots. It was around that time an inmate from my former prison got transferred to us. His name was Michael Hill, but everybody used to call him Big Mac. He was about seven feet tall and covered with tattoos. He was fat, but strong like an ox. I told you earlier how I loved to use the pepper ball gun. Well, this beast could take multiple shots without flinching, and to make matters worse, he hated my guts. As soon as he saw me, he started shouting, Can't escape from me! I came here for you! And marked my words, I'll gut you like a fish! Your days are numbered! Now, you might think seeing my friend Big Mac upset me. On the contrary, I was happy as a clam that someone I knew was there. Death threats from prisoners were nothing unusual for me, and I was curious to see if this place would break good old Big Mac as the rest of the prisoners. I was relieved when he started harassing the other inmates as regular prisoners should. They never stood up to him. When he took their food, they just went back to their cells without eating. When he pushed them to the ground in the yard, they just stood back up without saying anything and continued to walk around aimlessly. When the guy saw that all of the prisoners were pushovers, he started picking fights with the guards. They did not shout or beat him. They simply used mace, and a lot of it, to calm him and put him in solitary for a day every time he stepped out of line. After a few weeks, I could see that the place was starting to drive Big Mac crazy too. I figured he might even be open to conversation. I wanted to ask him what he makes of the place and also about the disturbing sounds and noises I kept hearing, so I approached him out in the yard. Hey Michael, how are you holding up? Hey, CO. I was hoping that this prison made a mute out of you too, but I guess I'm not so lucky. His use of prison slang and the emotions in his voice made me unreasonably happy. Well, ain't you a pleasant ray of sunshine? Now, listen here. I'm not thrilled either that I have to speak with you, but you are the only prisoner who is here that is more or less sane, so I wanted to ask you something. Go ahead, screw. Did you speak with the other inmates? Does anyone know what the hell is wrong with this place? Zombies, the lot of them. Prisoners and guards alike. I was kinda hoping you would tell me what's been going on, and what's up with all these noises. You can hear them too? Yeah, they drive me crazy. He sank his ugly head as he continued. These were the worst three months of my life. The hell are you talking about? You've only been here for two weeks. Not even I have been here for three months. Something messed with your head big time, CO. You left our old prison and got transferred here about a year ago. Sure, Michael. You either take me for an idiot or lost your mind too. Just take a look at your employment card, fool. I did as he suggested, 
and what I saw didn't make any sense. The card was issued 11 months and 4 days ago, but why the hell couldn't I remember? I wanted to resign immediately and get as far away from that messed up prison as possible. I left Big Mac and ran through the entire facility to the exit, where a guard stopped me. Where are you going? He asked in his usual monotone voice. I'm going home, I'm not feeling too well, so let me out, will ya? All correctional officers have living quarters within the prison grounds. But if you are ill, please go see the nurse first. What the hell? He was right. Some of the memories came back to me. How could I forget? I've been living there with the other guards the entire time. I actually haven't left the place since I started working there. All this crazy shit made me doubt myself. I wanted to sit down in my room and think things over. I walked through the concrete tunnel that connected the prison with the guards' quarters, turned right at the end, got into the elevator, exited on the minus third floor, and entered room, negative 307. I knew the way, yet I couldn't recall living there. I looked around and all of my shit was still there. My clothes in the wardrobe, my laptop on the desk, the poster of my favorite country band on the wall. It was all my stuff in my room without a doubt. I tried to remember the things that happened in the last 11 months, but my head was a mess. Memories of myself eating in the staff canteen flashed before my eyes and made my stomach turn. But I realized it doesn't matter anyway. They could have been stuffing me full of different drugs without me remembering it. As I was thinking, I could swear the noises I've been hearing got louder than ever before. Did these sounds have anything to do with my memory loss? I didn't really care. Only one thing mattered to me at that point. Get the hell out of there. Now, I ain't dumb. It was obvious they wouldn't let me go if I asked nicely. Officially, I might have been a guard, but in reality, they were trying to make a brainwashed zombie out of me. But luckily, my mind was too much for them to handle. I started to think about escape routes, but the whole building was underground. There was no internet or phone service either. The place was totally isolated from the outside world. And I'll be honest with you, I was scared shitless. I never had to think about this stuff before. My job was to prevent the prisoners from getting out, not figuring out ways to escape. But I knew who could help me, even if the thought made me sick. The next day, I felt like shit. Those sounds in my ear got even louder, and my head was throbbing. It didn't help that as I opened my door, one of the other guards greeted me with the usual expressionless face and voice. You left your post yesterday without saying a word. This is unacceptable. Yeah, sorry about that, buddy. I had a bad day and needed some rest. If you are not feeling well, please visit the nurse. No, no, it's all good now. I'm better than ever and ready for some good old guard duty. I will make a report about this irregularity. Do that, but now get the hell out of my way. I had to hurry up with my escape. If those people figure out what I was planning, they'd probably put me in a cell. Or worse, I just hoped Big Mac would have some kind of plan. Getting out of there with help from a guard should be a nice piece of cake for him, right? I have no idea how to get out of this place, he said, after I spent about half an hour convincing him that I was serious. Are you shitting me right now? You're supposed to be the big bad prisoner with thousands of escape plans. Listen here, screw. This yard is the only place that's not underground, but there is a 16-foot fence and a 30-foot concrete wall topped with more than a dozen guard towers around it. Even if we make it through the fence, the snipers will shoot us by the time we make it to the wall. But let's pretend we make it there. Are we supposed to climb out like Spider-Man? No, we should just forget the yard and try the main gate. There are several armed guards stationed there. You must have seen them too when they brought you in. How are we supposed to have better chances there? If I could start a prison riot, we might be able to overpower them, he said. But it would be easier growing wings and flying out than convincing these grumps to fight. The throbbing in my head intensified. It was almost unbearable. You better start thinking, or we're going to end up like these other brainless idiots here. There must be a good way, for God's sake. I hear you. The ringing in my head keeps getting louder every day. We need to get out now, he said then sat quietly for a while. 
I could almost see the grinds turning in his fat head. All of a sudden, he asked, Do you know where the backup generator is? You wanna cause a power outage? How would that help us? I can't start a riot, but this is the next big thing. It should confuse the guards, and the two of us might be able to make it through the main exit if we sneak up on them in the dark. But even with our element of surprise, we are going to need some good stuff from the armory if we want to force our way out. And how am I supposed to? I was interrupted by another guard. He approached me from behind and said, You should not talk to the inmates. You are exhibiting strange behavior. I will escort you to the nurse. To say that I didn't like our escape plan would be an understatement, but it was sure better than letting the nurse near me. It's now or never, Big Mac! I shouted. He jumped up and knocked the person out with one punch. The other guards started running towards us. So, I quickly handcuffed Big Mac and told them I will personally take him back to his cell. The bluff worked. They let me through, and once inside, we could make our way to the armory. There was nobody in the room, which didn't surprise me. No one needed the riot gear in this prison. No one, except us. Big Mac chuckled as he was getting into the body armor. Who would have thought that one day, I'd be a ninja turtle? Yeah, very amusing. But hurry up, won't ya? There are security cameras everywhere. If they still don't know that we are here, they will figure it out soon. I said as I picked up a flashlight. I'm almost ready, but you forgot your favorite tool. He said as he handed me a loaded pepperball gun. This guy was more human than I thought. For a moment, I even felt bad for shooting him so many times in the past. We made our way to the backup generator in full riot gear. As we were running, I started to question my sanity. I have lost my memory, been hearing strange sounds, and now I have even armed a prisoner, and we were on our way to cut the power. It was a nightmare, but there was no way back. As we were getting closer to the generator room, the alarm went off. The damn thing was abnormally loud, sounded like an air raid siren, but at least it overpowered the other noises in my ear. Surprisingly, only one guard crossed our path, and Big Mac made short work of him with his baton. When we finally got to the generator room, I used my keys. We entered and closed the door behind us. The alarm was too loud. We couldn't speak with each other. But not much coordination is needed for unplugging power cables and pressing a big red button below the sign that says, Power off to be used in case of fire or emergency. Does being brainwashed in an underground prison count as an emergency? I would say yes. The generator stopped and the lights went out, and the alarm that was making my ears bleed finally stopped. We were in total darkness. I don't know which was worse, that or the stillness. Don't get me wrong, I was kind of glad that I finally couldn't hear the noises, but something wasn't right. No footsteps, no panicked voices in the distance, no nothing. Big Mac spoke up to break the silence. There is no time to waste. We're in the middle of an escape. Let's move. We turned on our flashlights, left the room, and made our way towards the exit. We were advancing slowly in the darkness, expecting a guard patrol to jump out from the shadows and attack us any time. But no one was coming. The only thing we could hear as we were walking down the dark corridor was our own footsteps. What the hell is going on? Where are all the guards? I whispered, I don't like this any more than you. Something isn't right, but let's hurry up and get out of here. When we finally got closer to the exit, we could hear faint breathing. We turned off our flashlights and proceeded slowly towards the main gate, where the sound was coming from. There should have been at least ten guards there, but we could only see the silhouette of one person standing in front of the gate, and now to my surprise, for some reason, the gate was open. That person was the only thing standing between us and our freedom. My hands were sweaty as I pulled out my pepperball gun and shot. My aim was perfect, and the ball hit right in the head, but the bastard didn't even flinch. It just stood there as if nothing happened. I was looking at the shadowy figure in disbelief when it started speaking. I couldn't see its lips move, and the whole thing sounded like a whisper in my head. Experiment successful. Sadistic guard cooperates with violent prisoner. Time for the interview. Please, tell me, Subject 432, what made you team up with a criminal? Did that person really think I was going to answer? 
I aimed at it again and took another shot. The pepper ball hit the figure, but it continued to speak as if nothing happened. Test subjects 432 and 732 are not compliant. The interview must be postponed. Power could be turned back on. Broadcast of infrasonic noise should continue. Subject 432 should be returned to his room and subject 732 to his cell. Big Mac let out a roar and started running towards the figure, ready to smash its head with his baton. But as he reached the person and swung, all of the lights came back, blinding me for a few seconds. The noises of my ear also returned louder than ever before. Once I was able to open my eyes, there was no one there. I could only see Big Mac as he was swinging left and right with his baton and shouting, Come back and let me kill you, you rat! Let's just get out of here. We can think about this later. I don't want to stay any second longer in this place, I said as I grabbed his shoulder. He shut up and followed my lead. We ran through the gates and pushed ourselves forward through the passageway leading outside. After what seemed like ages, the passage began to rise and we saw the light at the end. My memories are a bit fuzzy, but I can remember how great the sun felt as we made it outside. The relief that nobody was following us. The excitement as Big Mac was hotwiring a car in the parking lot in front of the prison. The happiness as we were finally riding on the highway and the refreshing taste of the beers we bought at the gas station to celebrate. I must admit, it was almost too easy. I had the feeling that they were letting us go. But hey, don't look a gift horse in the mouth, right? The only thing that's bothering me is that I still hear these frickin' noises. I tell you, it's driving me insane. That's why I'm here, nurse. I told you everything just as you asked me to. But I doubt some bullshit advice can help me. Just prescribe me some strong pills. I need it to relax a bit. I have been on the run for, now I think about it, I can't really remember. How did I even get here? You look awfully familiar. What the hell? The shadowy figure at the gate. I couldn't quite see its face. But it looked like you, in this room. No windows. Am I still in the prison? No, it's getting louder. No, no, please, make it stop, please, please! I shall return to my quarters. Please let me know when I can resume my work, thank you. Interview Notes Reprogramming the brain of test subject 432 through psychological conditioning using infrasonic noise met the modeled goal. The subject believed the escape attempt was successful. Loss of short and long-term memory is within the expected range. Aggression level decreased, and empathetic tendency level increased. Further conditioning is not required. Subject 432 can return to his daily tasks. Thanks for listening, Wolfpack. If you want to submit your own story, the links for my email and subreddit will be down below. I've also created a Discord, so if you want to join that, the link will be in the description down below as well. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And with that said, have beautiful nightmares, and I will see you next time.